can get it. Uh, I tell you what, we got a piece of white. Maybe got a little more. No. <laughs> um, I think I'm all right. This is sort of my little tribute to Herb Smith and Bunny Reed. Of course, these are all original Herb Smith. This one's brand new. I was about to say that looks like it's, it's never brand new. Burn. It was the one, the last one that came in, and after her passed away, I said, No, I'm not going to sell it. Uh, this is one called Amanda Bow. It was named after his daughter, Amanda. This is one he did. He said he took him 45 minutes just to do. Get here and everybody get some color on. It took him 45 minutes to do the artwork alone on that and color it in. Yeah, it took me about two days. And then he signed the back of it, of course. That was that's March of 1978. And he's put over here two, four wrecks, because when he came over and met my son, and Herb was that way, he would be gifted. The boomerang was a calling card uh -huh. for Herb. Now, so anyway, I made a little dedication. These, these, two, these two people are very, what work. Herb certainly influenced modern boomerang. Bunny Reed from Australia, and that's his grandson here and his family. I showed you yesterday. This is the team from 84. So we got in here, Robbie Crow, uh, Robbie Crow, Bunny Reed, uh, Mil uh, Dennis Miller, I can't see his face, and Peter, maybe that's De 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 his son Peter. Here's the whole crew outside of my van, which is best Bob Burwell. That's Bob, that's who that was. And, and this is outside my, I had a brand new van at the time, and Robbie Kroll and this other boy rode, and he said, man, this is like flying, driving the 747. <laughs> <laughs> here's a picture of Herb Smith right here. Here's a picture of Eric Darnell with his new bride. She's too pretty for him. Let's see. You can get that. But Eric's, yeah. been, Eric's one of the influences on, on Boomerang also. Then you can rec people can recognize Janetsky, Rod Jones, some Larry Roof work. This was a Herb Smith, the last Herb Smith collection I got in. High class picture there done on a towel on newspaper. And then this is Stancil Johnston. And this is Herb Smith when he first came to the United States in 70, 76 out in California at some club, and, and Stancil wrote a book on Frisbees. I have not heard of him. This is the boomerang that I won the first, my first Smithsonian boomerang tournament with that Bunny Reed gave me or sold me. He only sent me two. And the only reason why he did that because he was no longer using that design. Bunny also did artwork. He was a nice amateur. There's a river gum. Tourist artwork, but he was self-taught. I sold those around 10 bucks, something like that. He just liked to do a little artwork. <laughs> so, then, of course, back here is the, this is the heart of the place. This is the shipping room and the storage room. And uh, uh, at one time, I had tables all around here that would be filled with orders every day. All oh, that's changed. First line. Are you just not doing as much, or? It was, it, it's changed the way I'm doing. I'm not doing business as I once was. Uh -huh. I don't have to stock the inventory that I once did because I can get it pretty quick. But uh, so if I say business has changed. These are uh, Chet Snowford's boomerangs. These are all Jim Mayfield's boomerangs. Uh, these are the didgeridoos. And we better play a didgeridoo for you so you'll have that tune while we're going around. And while, while, you, while, you, while you, you don't need to focus on this. And over here, you have some bat rings. And I'm missing a bat ring from Neil Camelson. I'm Bobby P.O.'d. If someone came in here and stole that up out of there, it may be just fall on the floor. After mouth. And I was, yeah, that, it took me three months to learn how to do that. And sometimes I still can't do it. This is one of the small ones. The smaller the bore, the easier, the easier they are to blow. 
but the, the more, the longer and bigger diameter, the more air it takes. Uh, it's a fascinating thing to work on. But this is my, okay, these are from my personal collection, Tom. And uh, here's some original Rusty Harding. This black boomerang with the blue under the razor is uh, a Zulu rang. That was one of uh, Kim Deutschman from South Africa sent me this one and one over there behind the didgeridoos. And I said, that's beautiful boomerangs, but I wouldn't pay you what, what you were asking for them. The wood's no good. And he finally found the good wood, and he made excellent boomerangs, but uh, he's uh, hard to keep up with. Hadn't heard from him in many, many years. Uh, let me get a, let me get a pointer. Gee, I need a laser. Yeah, but this right here is a root boomerang. Robbie Kroll and his Aboriginal buddy went, went on the R Murray River, and they were logging. They would find these roots in the shore. And they harvest these roots and carry them back and let them dry for a year. And I think he got two boomerangs out of the root. This is the most fantastic boomerang until it cracked right there because I could throw it, it'd go out, around. When it got over my head, it would literally stop and come straight down. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a boomerang do that, and very few boomerangs do that. After I cracked it and repaired it, it would no longer do that. Mm -hmm. huh. And so, okay, these are, this is a Ted Bailey with many pieces of different kind of wood. Ted, Ted, this is a, a, a Lamba, I think he called it, with the uh, Hawaiian coal wood. Two Herb Smith minis, two more Herb Smiths, and a little story here, last time Herb visited, he had a number of boomerangs decorated with this kind of writing on it. One of them even had his picture on it, and they were done by the second best forger in England, because Herb was a, uh, a, a prison officer. And I said, what do you mean the second best? He said, we hadn't caught the first one yet. <laughs> anyway, uh, this little German Mini, a Rusty Harding Mini Hurricane that would go out about 50 yards, believe Gosh. it or not. Two more of Ted Bailey's. This is some of that satin wood I was telling you about, bird's eye maple, uh, ebony, and looks like probably uh, oak. Lauren Hawes did a, a butt joint, which I promptly hung on the wall because I knew it would break. This little boy, Tom um, it's a Baker from uh, California, one of the Swiss makers made this with this little inlay African veneer. Three Rod Jones, Neil Camelson, another Rod Jones, all original Gerhards that I'll no longer throw. This one I can get. I, I used to be able to get well nearly a hundred yards out of that one. This one finally broke apart in three pieces. Great flyer. This is made out of dogwood. It came from a dead tree on Barnaby Roo's farm. <laughs> every every <laughs> boomerang's got a story. Uh -huh. uh, that's black locust and this is one of Al's Omegas. Uh, John Flynn, Ben Denner, a blank, Al Gerhard, White Oak. Somebody said, when are you going to make a boomerang out of it? And I said, never, so you can see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. This is a black cherry that Al had done and two Rusty Harding. This one I used in the competition one year. These right here are these two boomerang. Well, these two were in my original catalog, the Bunny Reed Witchy Proof Hook and the Witchy Proof Traditional. These are coach wood. And he didn't stencil these on. These are truly hand painted. And you mm -hmm. watch the video where how he does it. It's amazing. It's amazing what he was doing. That was his little junior hook. Then he came out with a 16-inch model, which these two are. And this is coach wood. This is n not coach wood. I don't believe you can't get co coach wood in boomerangs anymore. This in 1976, that boomerang sold for 550. This one sold for 750. Mm. Uh, the last time I had these was probably five, six years ago. They went at $25 a piece and, and people were begging for them. Mm -hmm. If you can ever find an original witchy proof hook, for sure, get it. Mm -hmm. And they, I would say the same thing with the 19 inch traditional. They, they represent what a standard old time boomerang would fly like. They whack your fingers off. You're not this will whack your fingers off. You're not careful. But mm -hmm. boy, I mean, tell you, uh, it's solid. You can lay into it and throw it. And, and all that sort of thing. So, uh, uh, but all, all the little, where all this junk is right here is, is where I do my shipping. Now, I do want to show you something here, since you've got your video camera out, and I brought this for you all. This was a Rod Jones, and this was the first international co cup competition in Australia that USA won. USA, Australia, France, Germany, Holland, Switzerland, Japan. That was the order. And Rod made up a bunch of boomerangs with the national flags on it. The back side has the signatures, or in this case, facsimile of the signatures of everybody who competed. And then this is the American team of uh, Chet Snofer, Barnaby Rue, Bunny Rue, and Eric Darnell celebrating there. So this was 
And I only had maybe 10 of these, and they went at like $75 a piece. Wow. And is there a value to them? Who knows? But Whatever somebody will pay. That's right. <laughs> I mean, as far as collectible, the various national flags. Again, Rod did a beautiful job mm -hmm. of this. Now, this is my Rod Jones Queen of Hearts. I want you to look at this. By the way, this is Neil Camelson's design for a T-shirt. And this is with the, with the circles and the boomerang and so forth. This was the, what year was this, so 1993. Okay, anyway, has a, she has a little personality, doesn't she? A little color to her cheek, she's got a smile. Mm -hmm. And this is the cliche shiny that boomerang is, you know. And of course, it's signed on the back. When was this done? 688, good gracious. I don't have very many boomerangs on display at home, because I have other art. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a Janetsky Brothers boomerang. Wow. All right. This is their Greyhound. Jeff Lurie sent this to me as a gift. Uh, Jeff says a lefty. This is a righty. I threw it maybe a dozen times and I realized, you know, I've got something special here. And I just hung on the wall. And that's the back side. But they didn't sell their boomerangs. They just made them. They just made them. They loved to make them. And they gave them away. Again, these are boomerangs. I have no idea. I've only had one. That's this one right here. It's not for sale. But uh, there are people who will play, pay big bucks mm -hmm. for one of these. Now, this is a Herb Smith uh, Ninja. He painted it black. This has never been thrown by me because I didn't want to damage it. Reminds me of Southwestern uh, Indian pottery. Uh, Maria, what's her name? I can't think of what her last name is. But she did this pottery and burned it black. But this is black, and then Herb etched through the black to do this acorn pattern. And signed it on the back. See here, Ninja Bud, Jim, three millimeter, May of uh, 1988. And uh, I think he said he was he got he had tested these out, and the best he could tell, he was probably getting well over 120 yards, maybe 130 oh, yards, yeah. because they were going out over the highway. Uh -huh. And I, yeah. or knowing Herb, I believe in Herb was very, very conservative. Okay. And then we're going to take this out and throw it on with you all. This is just this is something new. Okay. It's <laughs> nothing of any Get our, yeah. our input on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> you don't know anything about it. Right. <laughs> anything? Okay, this. Well. What is this? What are those sticks like that? This? Yeah. That's a bull roar. What does it do? You've never heard of bull roar? A little matter horn. Hey. Oh, yeah. Seems like it go anywhere, it doesn't. I know. This one doesn't work all that well. Not gonna have that room in here to do it? Well, uh, yeah. This one, it's. It'll flaw in it. Huh. <laughs> but this one it has a little, it has a little nick in it that messes up the airflow. Mm -hmm. and, and this was these are done by some Aboriginal ladies. This is black wattle wood, and they do uh, either a kangaroo or a snake or, or a crocodile totem. And, and uh, I sell these for like fifteen dollars. <laughs> and uh, people the dog do a little class, and the little kids say, "I say, have you heard this sound before? Crocodile Dundee." Yeah. Now this was this was a they also called sacred trajingas. And this was made by an Aboriginal lady, friend of uh, Lauren Hawes. And Lauren Hawes, I got a few from him. And I tried to get more, but these people are, you know, they do something one time, and they've done it. Or they just, they don't, re they don't repeat themselves. Mm -hmm. And these are ritualistic things, and they don't like to sell their ritual. Just like this piece of art right here. This is painted by an Aboriginal. It's taken from overhead. This is on part, on like a particle board. But this is... It's gray in tone because these are fire. This is a fire right here. This is a windbreak. This is a man sitting around the fire. These are paths throughout the ter territory. Uh, this may be charcoal. I don't understand the whole, but it's telling a tale. And, and the, the gray is because of the smoke of the fires. And it's all done with dot patterns. I have one, I have one at home that I, uh, that's symmetrical. But, the aboriginals use this strictly for ritual. When they're finished with it, it stays in the bush. And the reason why you find this stuff when it's done on natural materials like logs and bark, I'll show you a bark painting in a minute, 
is because some white fella came along and found him before nature had time to destroy it. Uh -huh. But the aboriginals will not sell their religion. Right. Okay. But they might paint you a picture and leave out their sacred totem. Mm -hmm. And it goes beyond, it's more complicated than that when you get into dream time and what is dream time and so forth and so on. One of the best movies for trying to understand dream time is The Last Wave of Peter Weir.